A black owned beauty company hits the $1 billion mark. Shonda Rhimes has eight shows coming to Netflix. Whoopi Goldberg pushed back hard. Meghan Markle's family is still trying to cash in. Now, who pushed Russell Wilson out of the way to get near Sierra? And we have our photo of the week and more, so stay tuned. Welcome to What's the Four and One, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Khan. I'm Onika McLean. Welcome, guys. Hey, hey. Kizzy. How are you guys doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, so let's get started with some quick takes. Okay, so on the heels of the Forbes um, article about Kylie Jenner and her mm -hmm. almost hitting a billion dollars and all that stuff, Kim was like, well, <laughs> hold up. <laughs> TMZ <laughs> reported that Kim Kardashian's latest round with Kimoji fragrances, mm -hmm. so it's um, Kimoji Cherry, Kimoji Peach, the, the Vibes one. Yes. So it reportedly made, listen to this, guys, $5 million dollars. And how long? No. Five days? Five minutes. Wow. A million dollars a minute? Wow. Uh, there's no verification of this, but I mean, it's Kim. It is possible. Yes, it is. I Listen, <laughs> we need to get into some fragrances and some cosmetics because we are in the wrong industry. It's apparently. true. But yes, while we're on the subject of, you know, the Kardashians, you know, like we said, Kylie Jenner has been kind of tiptoeing around that whole $1 billion valuation in her cosmetics company. Listen, Pat McGrath Labs actually oh. hit a billion dollars. Oh, that's a black girl magic yes. moment. Yes. Okay. Yes. Black owned cosmetics company. It's actually available at Sephora. A billion dollars. So this is what happened. Miss McGrath released a statement that she signed a $60 million deal with New York City-based Eurasio Brands, and the investment increased the total valuation of the Pat McGrath Labs brand to $1 billion. That's self-made right there. That no is, shade to Kylie or anything. That is self-made. That, that, that is self-made. Self Come on now. That is Come on. amazing. And it's projected to bring in approximately... $60 million in sales by the end of this year. Well, that's so, crazy. Yes, that's it crazy. Is. I know she never thought that it would do all that. It's true. I just know. keep working your dreams, guys. Just keep working and your dreams. And in two years. In two years. Yeah. That's, that's how much. $1 billion. Wow. Amazing. I mean, yeah. in other wonderful, amazing, increasing our black culture, <laughs> loving hip hop. <laughs> Girl, what? Love and hip hop. <laughs> Jessica Dime posted a picture of her three month old baby. What's the baby's name? Blessings. Oh. Brielle Williams. Yeah, so oh, she's that's, so pretty. That's really nice. And and, and other little little shades. So Stevie J and Faith <laughs> and Faith Evans. I mean, let's do it for the culture. Let's do it for the culture. <laughs> let's I mean, do it for the actual culture. Cardi B's baby. Oh, whose name is culture. <laughs> like this is like see this? This is the part of black culture that you like. This is what keeps us balanced. You know, because you got, you got Barack and you got Cardi. <laughs> yeah. We everything for everybody. Yeah. I just, that was oh, that was, that, was, that was cute. That was cute. That, that was, was cute. Burst. I like that. All right. So, as you recall, uh, last year, Shonda Rhimes signed a $300 million deal with Netflix. Remember, we talked oh, about it on Shonda the show. Land and all that stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, she just released a list of the eight shows that she is going to be producing for Netflix. And of them, it includes The Warmth of Other Suns. Uh, that was like a novel that was written about, I think it was after, you know, the whole migration, great migration. You see and my face, right? You know, this is my, I have no idea. Hello, that's about. why we are okay. sharing right now. So we are educating everybody, you and everybody at home. And Pico and Google. Sepulveda, or Sepulveda, depending on how you accent it. And it's a series which is set in Mexico, Mexican California. So it was before it actually became a part of the United States. Back in the 1840s. Before it was jacked. Ooh, well, you know. Come on, America. Yeah, tell the truth. Shame the devil. Listen, listen. Before it was so, jacked. So, yeah. So people don't know that. <laughs> but now they're going to know. San Antonio. Come on. Like. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, all those, those <laughs> Spanish-sounding names. It's mm -hmm. Spanish-sounding for a reason. So maybe mm -hmm. that will help people kind of understand more, you know, the, the history between the U.S. and Mexico. And, and trying stop to kick Mexicans demonizing out. Mexicans. Yeah. yeah. Mexicans like this. This whole Midwest is ours. Like, <laughs> give it back, <laughs> and we'll go home. <laughs> give you back. on fire today? Okay. All sorry. right. No, we all on fire because it's hot. Okay. So, <laughs> no, it's not. We have air conditioning. We just didn't turn. Do you it see on. this? 
We just you see this? She mean. She mean. You know how sweat mustache. When you have the sweat stash, that means you're mean. It means, that means you are beautiful and very nice. That's what it means. Who told you that? Thank you. Okay, whatever. Thank you. Come, come Thank on, you. What, what, shimmy, shimmy. Uh, uh, uh. Kiki, Kiki. <laughs> are you doing? Are you riding? This is the dumbest song. Okay, listen, no. <laughs> so, comedian Shiggy, yes, who made that dance for you. Wait, let me do the dance for you guys. <laughs> Kiki, I don't know who Kiki is. <laughs> but Kiki, so we want to know if you love him. Are you riding? Are you never going to leave him? I don't know that part. I look a little retarded when I. Oh, oh sorry. Mentally challenged. All right, listen. Okay, anyway. sorry, guys. Okay, guys. Yeah, yeah, they're coming for you. So, yes, he came to fame off of that, went viral with that, actually, and came to fame originally with all of his impersonations of Stephen A. Smith, who is a commentator on ESPN. Mm -hmm. So, now, he's back, doing his thing. So, he made the news with a video showing him pushing Russell Williams Wilson aside so he could take a photo with Sierra. To get Sierra. Well, so, You know yeah. what it is? Like, you get one, like... You know what I mean? The internet has like ADD for real. You can do like one and then they're paying all this attention and they blow you up and then they act like you never exist. So. Well, you know, but he's there now. I think now his name is out there. He's there. It's, it's going to be what it is. So like you guys should check, check out my um, Smile B video. I mean, <laughs> I have one. Girl. I have one on the internet. It's, it's, it's Little Duval and Snoop Dogg. Check me out, Diva of Comedy. On okay, Instagram. yes, yes, <laughs> yes, big it up. Mm -hmm. And in other news, Sissy Houston, mm. right? There's word from her family that said that she's battling dementia. You know, Sissy Houston yeah, is the, the late Whitney Houston's mom. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so sad. It so is. I want to say Sissy is 76 years old. No, she's 84 years old. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she's. She's up there. I mean, what she was saying was she's just getting old, but, mm. you know, people around her are like, no, she's repeating herself. This is definitely a sign to us that she has, like, early stage dementia. So we'll see what happens. <sighs> you know, yeah, you know, it's unfortunate. She has a lot coming at her right now between yeah, the movie, with the movie with, and all that know, stuff that's Houston going on with her. Well. And then, yeah, and all the, like, the backlash with the Dion Warwick sister. And, yeah. Right? So it's a lot probably going on. Just just the stress of it all. Right? It's making it worse. The, the stress of it to all. To be sure. Bobby Christina, Whitney, I mean, you know, that had taken a huge toll on her. So... Exactly, well, exactly. Our prayers go out to, to the Houston family. Definitely. Well, we're going to take a quick break. But in the meantime, why don't you go to YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 4 one TV. And if you're listening to us on a podcast or the Alexa Flash briefing, thank you and please subscribe to that too. We'll be right back with What's Poppin'. Stay tuned. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. So we've all known about the tragedy with Anthony Bourdain and Kate Spade, right? That's right. a tragic loss. But what it has done, it's highlighting mental illness. Right. So Michelle Williams from formerly Destiny's Child, I, I kind of say she's still a part of Destiny's Child when yeah. they're together, uh, checked herself into a mental hospital because she's suffering right. with mental illness. And the question posed to you guys, as well as you, Kizzy, is the highlighting of the of mental illness, right. you know, and, and suicide and all that stuff. It's it's prevalent throughout society, the just humanity, but particularly in black culture, mm -hmm. it's frowned upon. We don't we don't talk about it. We kind of hide it. It's like a. Uncle Pete in the room type of situation. Right, what what right. do you think that Michelle checking herself into the hospital, what does it do for us? Well, I think it really takes away the stigma from, you know, mental illness. You know, like a, a lot of times, like you said, yes, it's Uncle Pete in the back. People are not talking about it. And so because you're not talking about it, it, le it lends and adds to the stigma. And then, you know, you don't feel like you can come out because people are going to look at you and think, oh, she is crazy or he is crazy. And it's like, this is Michelle Williams saying, look, at the height of my fame, in Destiny's Child, I was suicidal. suicidal. I was suffering from depression. And she's still actually suffering from it. She just got engaged, right? She should be the happiest she's ever been. But that just goes to show you, depression is not something you can just pull yourself out of or right. get happy because things are happy you in your life. You need to get help. Exactly. There's, there's help. It's if you had diabetes, right. you would go get it 
help for it and you would manage it. And it's the same in, like any other sickness. That's the thing you have to, like you said, take the stigma off of it. And we pray, we're praying for Michelle, you know, yeah. to get better. And right. And and if you're suffering from from depression, anxiety, go get help. There there are hotlines that you can. Uh, call there's you can google information right. i mean we'll have some links below but you know really care for yourself care for yourself and the people around you too because a lot of times even depressed people they're not going out there to get help right when you're depressed your natural inclination is to cocoon yourself to stay away from people to isolate yourself you and people don't necessarily know what's going on so if you have that friend for example used to be gregarious laughing talking going out and then. now does not want to do any of those things or you know picking at her food or what have you doing things that you know is not you know the way that she usually does things that might be an indication that person needs help. You can ask them. You can be the one who says, hey, you know, ever thought of thinking about talking to somebody or doing something like that? So, yeah, we can all reduce the stigma. You, are you know, one? Keeper. Yes, one person at a time. So, good on Michelle Williams. I hope she gets the help that she needs and, and more people get the help they need. Amen. So I don't know if you guys heard, but Janine mm, Pirro, right? Mm. She is was the former Westchester uh, DA. Okay. Now she's a Fox News host. Yeah, she was on her. the View promoting her book. Right? So the book is called Liars, Leakers, and Liberals: <laughs> The Case Against the Anti-Trump Conspiracy. Right? She called. Well, she said that Whoopi Goldberg another host of The View, right? We all love Whoopi, suffered from TDS. So TDS stands for Trump Derangement Syndrome. So she wow. said that she was deranged because she hates Trump so much. And Whoopi had to, like, take a breather and a break because Whoopi got a little testy. Yeah, she on, snatched her edges. Is yeah, what she did. Whoopi was not <laughs> happy about that. Whoopi was, like, deranged. Like, wait, first of all, let me... And right. then Whoopi led into her, but and she had later apologized, right? Because... Right. Yeah, ah, oh, man, uh, Janine, yeah. that was a lot. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, we're divided as a country right. as it relates to this man. Like, whoa, everybody's blaming Donald Trump for everything that's ever happened in the history of America. No, because that feeds into that whole idea that Trump derangement syndrome is a thing. It's not. There are people who have legitimate reasons why they do not like Trump. They don't like his policies. And that is what... It's Whoopi not Goldberg, a syndrome, right? <laughs> Exactly. That's what Whoopi Goldberg was talking about. Because she's like... Because, you know, the moment you were just describing when Piro was, like, pointed at her, like, Trump derangement syndrome. And she's like, are you pointing at me? I know you're not pointing at me. I am not deranged. What I am upset about is when we start the conversation talking about how Mexicans are rapists. You know, yeah, yeah. when we when we start the conversation by being so divisive and encouraging people to beat each other up. Remember, like, you know, right. when, when Trump was talking in those rallies, oh, wouldn't you just like to punch that guy in the face? And, you know, all of this stuff. And it's not OK. You know what I mean? Like you can be a person who does not support the GOP or you're not conservative or whatever, what have you. But what Trump has done is so different. And I think that's what Whoopi was talking about, being divisive. Being angry, calling Mexicans rapists, you know, stopping, you know, brown people at the border. Like, they're, all of it is just making people very upset. It's all not upset, deranged it's, and not but, hysterical. Okay, that's true. But it's all what America has been doing historically. Mm -hmm. this, this is nothing new. Like, there's, this no, is there's always new. been. This is in, what in we've what been sense? Those babies in the, in the cages, that, that, that has been going on for two years. Like separation of families. That's been going on for two years. Like, huh? All well, right. I'm just, all I'm saying is America, Congress, the, they, we all, they all need to take a look at this whole broken system. Okay. I'm not a Trump supporter, but I'm just saying this one guy, this one guy. You know, no, but I mean, excited. he's being aided and abetted, obviously, by Congress and, and all of the oh, GOP, right. of course. I mean, that is Let's, it's, let's it's name not, them all, you know what I mean? It's not, of course not. It's not just Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. But I think there's this stoking of, of racial divisions that I, that I see and that I don't appreciate either. You know, it just, you know, talking in code about things. You know, remember that guy several months ago, there was a, a gunman? who came in and shot up, I think, a Waffle House. I'm not sure. Yes, I yes, yes. Shot yes. up the whole Waffle House. And this black guy, right, 
and it, it shouldn't matter his race, but he happened to right, be black. Right, he helped them. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and he actually Subdued stopped the, gun. the gunman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It took him weeks to even acknowledge that. Why did it take so long for and him to guy, do that? And the guy, right, he, he, was play, he was paying for the funerals we, out of his own pocket, right? Yeah, we we, we, we reported on this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so that, for example. But if there's any type of, you know, terrorist attack involving a Muslim, then it's like, oh, my God, this is so bad. Look at all these Muslims. They're terrible people, blah, blah, blah. This and syndrome. it's the way Let's that he it. frames it. That is what we're talking about. But again, it goes back to the syndrome. It's not a derangement syndrome. It's that people have legitimate concerns about the way that he is stoking divisions in the country. And that's what Whoopi was talking about. So no derangement syndrome. People are concerned. Yes, I will say this. There are people who anything he does at this point, they're just up in arms because they're so like upset about everything. But that is not... The vast majority of people that you know I see on TV or talking, it's not derangement. It's coming from genuine concern. So there's that. Which is me. You listen. You, you giving me looks. I don't know. I'm, I'm just. I'm just. Listen. I'm just saying. Like um, there's what? there's a there's a we 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 have a broken system, and and that's all I'm gonna say. We have a broken system, and it it starts from the top down. And it's been broken for a very, very long time. It's been broken, yes. He, it's That's, been broken a long so. time. Trump did not break it. You know, this has been in the works for a long right. time. And racism has been Cause in the Because when, when he leaves, because when he leaves. Bigotry has always been When he leaves of that history. office, America is going to do same business, business as usual. That's exactly yeah. what's going to happen. And we're all hype, but policies and laws and like, like, local elections and all that stuff need to happen that it the system is all the way broken we, we just have a villain now that's that's how i see it so uh, so what we have no hope now so we shouldn't be de we shouldn't be the no, because our, no, what do you think? i think what that what we should just start working because it, it, you can easily get riled up and, and getting riled up and you know what we got upset and blah 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 but like why are these policies in place why are they still on the books these are things that we why can are they being put on the books at right. this point in time, too. Like, why? What, what are we trying to do? Democracy, we, we yes. Democracy is hurting right now. We Very, need to get yeah. into but, that. But, it's, but I think that, and I know we're just going off on a tangent, but I think that this is the best time. I think that this had to happen because sometimes you need to see all your flaws. And and right now, I mean, he's tweeting every damn thing. So there's, there's no government secrets. He's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So it's like the stuff that would have never been, you know, leaked is like, he's like, whoa, whoa. But you, you need to see, you need to see where you where there's, where there's cracks in your armor so mm -hmm. that you can fix it. And I just think that sometimes it got to get worse in order to get better. And he's the, he's not even the worst. That's the sad part. Stop. Don't say that. <laughs> but speaking of the worst, right? Okay. So rolling out reported that a white woman in Berkeley, California, we've been reporting on this, you know, people, you know, Permit Patty and, and, and Barbecue Becky and all oh, these yeah, people. Oh, yeah, you might become calling, a meme, ladies. Yeah, you know, all these people, white people calling, you know, the cops on people of color for a living, basically. So we have another case. A white woman in Berkeley, California started harassing a group of people on the sidewalk. Sidewalk, y'all. Sidewalk. Yelling at them, saying... You don't belong here. You don't belong here. You don't belong anywhere. Right? Anywhere? Yes. So when the police arrived, <laughs> so, you know, they were like, you know, I saw the video because someone was, you know, recording, thank goodness. All the time, which yeah. is so ridiculous sometimes. Yeah, like. and she was like, excuse me, like, leave. Like, the black woman was like, leave, just go away. Like, we're not, we're not harassing you. Don't, we don't want any trouble. Please leave. And she was like, no, no. Like, she was literally spoiling for some type of fight. And so... The black people were like, "Hey, um, can you know, you know, can somebody stay and, and be a witness?" And, and what most were they most doing? people, what were they doing? most people, well, we didn't see it on the video, mm -hmm. but most people from their account just kind of walked away. They were like, "We don't want any part of this." They kept walking away. Finally, there was a white family though who said, "You know, yes, we're going to stay, and we're going to back you up." They called the police, and came, the police came, and then this white woman started to say, "Oh, there was a mob." This is what she said: "There was a mob. There were a mob, and they were trying to attack me." Skrrr, no. So <laughs> finally, this story ends differently because instead of, you know, the cops, you know, trying to placate the white person in this case, they arrested her. 
she was arrested because she had uh, violated her probation from a grand theft charge. So, so mental that's illness. What this is not even about <laughs> racial divides. Like that's yeah. the thing. Like everything is a white person, a black person. That's yeah. a mentally ill person. She's definitely she's so definitely off. Yeah, they they thought she might have been drunk too. So they were, she was definitely off. So come on. She was definitely so off. So come on. Like every story can't be racist based. Some people just stupid. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying everything. I'm not saying everything is race based at all. But right. I mean, it's just like because the race of the people is what it is. But well, she probably has case, no job kinda, in order to become a meme to lose her job. It, it ties in. I can't. Yeah. So, but I mean, no, seriously though, I mean, maybe not this case, but in other cases, why do you think it is that white people right now seem to be in a moment where they feel like they need to call the police? I don't black think people that. I don't think this is a me- moment. Is, is this a moment, or is it just been happening all along and this people are recording it, or what? Happened. People snitch. There's snitches everywhere, and uh, they tell. But what happens now? Is we record everything. Okay. We record murders. We record. I don't know what the hell this has happened to this society. But all yeah. we do is do. The, I was. I went to a concert, mm-hmm. and and the people were looking at the. They were looking at the artists through their phone. I, they that's didn't, they didn't even there. look at the person. The person was yeah. right there singing her heart out, and people were like this. And I was like, "What has our society come to?" Like. We're so disconnected. We're, yeah. It's like everything is just Memorex. Everything okay. is Memorex. It's, okay. Mm. Okay. So, okay, so you just think that this is happening more it's and been, more. It's right. That it's just not like happening more and more shootings. so that people are recording the it. police shootings are just being reported now because people are videotaping it. You have, everything is, everything is recorded. So you don't think that there is a culture, a moment where, you know, the politics and the environment, all of that is making people bold and I making them do this more. People you don't or think white has... people? White people? Okay, yeah. so I live in New York City. We live in New York City. Yes. Um, I, so I don't really feel that here, mm-hmm. but I was in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. And I was like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. It was a little, I was like, wait, wait. You know, and I'm very positive. I'm normally like, Wait, I think, wait. Did that just happen? Did that, yeah. Wait, wait. So <laughs> there were a couple moments like that, you know, a little aggression. But they say, right, this, it's a meme. This is don't let your president get your ass kicked, right? <laughs> Catch these hands. No. But so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, it's just a different time. It's just a different time, but we're just recording everything. It's, come on. Okay. okay. Think, of, think if, if we had this technology when it was uh, slavery or in the 60s. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. It was shocking because people saw it. Right. right. Which which is like a catch-22 right now because people see it so much that it cauterizes their... It's like nothing, like murder. People can watch a murder. You, right. I, There was a time when you could not watch a car crash. Everyone turned away. Now everyone wants to see every right. gory detail, and right. that's in media, music, television, film. Like, everything is just, I want to show you everything in slow motion and put Mozart behind it to make you You're crazy, feel. girl. All right, all right, like, I don't know. Tr- okay. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, okay. Just, this is my two cents. Well, yes. All right. Well, speaking of two cents, the family of Meghan Markle, Duchess of Sussex, they want to get their two cents and money, apparently, because, according to page six, Markle's half-sister, Samantha Grant, is reportedly lined up to appear in the British version of Celebrity Big Brother. Okay? Cashing in. The network... Yes, she should. Is, <laughs> the network is going to have the theme of the reality hit as... The Eye of the Storm. And they're expected to introduce housemates that have all been caught up in their own media controversies. And even her father is kind of turning up in, you know, different shows and stuff like that. So my question, Onika, and to the people at home, what is going on? Are they just literally trying to throw her under the bus now because she's, you know, you know, not even famous. She was famous before. But now that she's a part of the royal family, are they trying to throw her under the bus? Are they trying to cash in? What's really going on? Queen Elizabeth, I don't know what's up with you because normally you shut down. So I don't understand. <laughs> Those people will go bye-bye quickly. I just think that it's... When you get some celebrity at a certain point, what happens, producers and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, 
people that's you know the star the inquirer they're they're calling you they wouldn't have done it before mm -hmm. so once so that's you you're associated to somebody of some kind of caliber and greatness so you get to cash in people are going to do that that it's all about the mighty that dollar. Is, that is terrible. People, that why? Is terrible. Why? Because she's Meghan Markle? I, I, think it's, I think it's terrible that they're throwing her under the bus. Then she wrote that book, too. It was like the pushy sister, pushy princess. Stories uh, but, of the pushy princess. But guess what? That's mm -mm. going to happen. That happens to everyone. That is Who, unfortunate. Right, right? Bobby Brown wrote a book about Whitney Houston when she died. Like, it happens. That's what's going to happen. I think that what happens is we pay so much attention to it that it just kind of, like, grows. Well, I mean, apparently. I don't I think mean, that they we, have a relationship. Do they have a relationship? No, they don't okay, have a so, relationship. So Megan's not going to be a part of it because it's all going to be assumptions. She's like, people. it's going to fizzle it's, out. It's, it's going to fizzle it's out. It's not going to fizzle out. This is what she said, and this is what bothered what me, say? Samantha Grant. She was like, listen, <laughs> this is her quotes, right? Why would I stop living because we have a family issue going on? Back to the issue of cashing in. The media makes billions of dollars off of social issues and talking about the royals. I don't see how we're any different. No one has a copyright on our life experiences. So she is unapologetically Let cashing get in. Get your coins, girl. Because you, know mm -mm. you probably wasn't going to get them any other time. So get your coins, girl. This is all. People have no shame, man. And a father, like, that's even, like, worse. I'm like, come on, you're a dad. Like, what are you doing? You know the president of the United States of America had a reality TV show, right? <sighs> I just want you to know that. I just want you to know that. Mm -mm. Okay, I'm just I mean, saying no anything. shame. Like, like, um... Emma Rosa was in the White House. Like, she had a job there. I'm just saying, like... But we're talking about the royals now. Yeah, you know, but, America has become, like, a, the whole big reality show. We know that. But the royals now... Well, the royals always had their little, you know... The royals had their they drama. Had, they had... They had... What? Charles and Camille? Now, come on. They had their drama. So, they're, they're not exempt. They're not exempt. I know we want Meghan Markle to just be the princess. Just live. Just but live. guess what? You know... She had, we, you always got cousin Ray Ray that you don't want. Oh my God! Associated <laughs> with you, and guess what? Sometimes well, it's your sister, Sammy, Sammy it's your sister, and sometimes it's your dad. It just is what it is. But think about that. At her wedding, just her mom. But guess but what? Her mom sitting by herself. But her mom yes. looked regal, and guess what? That's the story of a lot of black girls. Mm. And you know what? I'd rather them come out with their nonsense now than they hide it. Well, she's and then, come and out then, a long time and, ago. And then, but then they hide it, and then she has to feel some kind of shame or pay some uh, uh, black hush male money. hush money. <laughs> Good. Like, sometimes just tell you, it is what it is. Okay. All right. So you team Samantha Grant. I'm not team <laughs> Samantha Grant. I am team get your coins, girl. I get it. I get it. Team Samantha Grant. Right. Somebody's going to write that book. Why not you? <laughs> Can you believe it? The show is over. It goes so fast every week. That's going to do it for this week's edition of What's the 4 and one your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. Until next week, check out our website, www.whatstheforeone.com. Yes, and hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe, like we said, to our YouTube channel, What's the 4 and one TV. Download our podcast. I'm Kizzy Cox, and on behalf of my co-host, Anika McLean, thank you for spending your time with What's the 4 and one Who's got the 411? Who's got the 411? We got the 411. What's the 411?